Good morning, friends. Stephen Bernoon here with Israeli News Live. It is September the 13th, 2024, and uh, we have very serious news coming out of St. Petersburg, Russia, where President Putin is responding to NATO offering long-range missiles inside of Ukraine to be able to strike Russian territory targets there. This is what uh, the president of Russia, President uh, Vladimir Putin, had to say about these things. If this decision is made, it will mean nothing less than the direct participation of NATO countries in the United States and European countries in the war with Ukraine. They're not translating everything he says here, but we'll we'll continue on here in just a moment. He also said there is an attempt to double talk because we are not talking about allowing or prohibiting the Kiev regime from striking Russian territory. It is already doing so using drones and other means. But when it comes to using long-range precision weapons of Western manufacture it is a completely different story, the president says. The Ukrainian army is not capable of striking with modern long-range precision systems of Western manufacture. It cannot do this. This is only possible using intelligence data from satellites, which Ukraine does not have. This is data only from satellites of the European Union or the United States in general, <coughs> from NATO satellites. Flight assessments of these missile systems can, in fact, only be in entered by military personnel of NATO countries. Ukrainian military personnel cannot do this. Therefore, we are not talking about following the Uca Ukrainian regime to strike Russia with these weapons or not. <clears throat> we are talking about making a decision about whether NATO countries are directly involved in the military conflict or not. If this decision is made, it will mean nothing less than the direct participation of NATO countries, the United States, European countries, in the war in Ukraine. This is their direct participation, and this, of course, significantly changes the very essence of the very nature of the conflict. This will mean that NATO countries, the United States, and European countries are fighting against Russia, and this is so then... And if this is so, then, he states, bearing in mind the change in the very essence of the conflict, we will make appropriate decisions based on the threats that will be created for us. Now, I want to show you something, though, regarding this right here. This is the way that uh, Hindustan Times uh, reported this. But yet, uh, if we go real quick to Twitter... Um, that was first reported to me by Charles here. Oh, gosh, I get to the right page there. And one of the things, Charles, when he brought it out, let's see, one of the, this one right here, for example, uh, has seen high-level high discussions in the UK and the USA about the Kiev regime. Let me, let me go further into this. The fact is already mentioned this, and, and experts confirm that both in uh, the Ukrainian army is not able to strike with modern long-range precision systems of Western manufacturers. Whoa, it's going faster than I can keep up. Let me set long-range precision systems of Western manufacturers. It cannot do this. It can only do so using intelligence from satellites, which Ukraine does not have. This is data only from EU satellites, or from the United States in general, from NATO satellites. This is the first thing. The second, and very important, maybe the key, 
is that only servicemen can, in fact, enter uh, the assignments into these missiles systems, this missile system. Ukrainian servicemen cannot do this. And so this is not about allowing the Ukrainian regime to strike Russia with these weapons or not. It is about deciding whether NATO countries are directly involved in a military conflict or not. If this decision is made, it will mean nothing other than the direct participation of NATO countries, the United States, European countries, in the war in Ukraine. And this is their direct participation. And this already, of course, significantly changes the very essence and the very nature of the conflict. This would mean that NATO countries, the United States, European countries are at war with Russia. And if this is the case, then, bearing in mind the change in the very essence of this conflict, we will take appropriate decisions based on the threats that will be posed to us. That is a more accurate translation of what President Putin had to say. The other version that we played for you to start with uh, clearly uh, was a watered-down version of what the president was saying there. Uh, also, um, Reuters is reporting that Putin has sent a clear message to the West, a long range of missiles for Ukraine, uh, you know, uh, letting the people know that this is something that they're not going to allow to have happen. Russia also has dismissed uh, British, uh, they've expelled the British... Uh, Oh, goodness, let me see if that came from, um, uh, yeah, expels the diplomats, that's USA Today reporting that one there. They have expelled the diplomats, uh, British diplomats, and tensions rise over the Ukraine missiles there. So when they begin to expel diplomats, you know there's some very serious issues going on. That's like a warning coming directly out of the Kremlin over these issues here. So we've got to watch that situation, what's happening over there in Ukraine, because it's certainly heating up. Uh, moving on over to Lebanon and Syria, Israel is doing airstrikes and raids. Actually did a very bold raid, as it's being uh, titled there inside of Syria, when they went uh, after a uh, Iranian base there. Uh, we have here Israel attacks Iranian targets in Syria, and it prepares for war. Uh, that's dealing with, that's from Bitbart News out of Israel. They're, they're basically softening up the targets, getting ready as they do their attack on Lebanon. They want to make sure the Iranians cannot be retaliating from Syria. According to the Sputnik News here, uh, they say Israel strike on Syria here is the latest. And they talk about this, 14 people were killed, 43 more were injured in Israeli airstrikes in central Syria on September the 8th, according to the Syrian State News Agency there. Uh, so that's another report on that. The Jerusalem Post, Israel's employing scorched earth policy in Lebanon to paralyze Hezbollah Arabs. As we got into this article right here, a, a virus that was placed into our computer that makes it shut down when they would like it to shut down, they were able to shut down our video on the scorched earth policy that Israel is doing right in the middle of the broadcast. So we're going to pick back up uh, where we left off here. Uh, of course, this is not this. This is a uh, Arabic post there where Israel had used a drone targeting a motorcycle. A private vehicle also was hit during that. It was passing in the opposite direction. Uh, and then, two, we have Hezbollah fires rocket at the main Israeli air defense headquarters. Uh, this was released uh, about 11 hours ago on Sputnik News there, uh, saying that the fighters of the Islamic resistance launched the uh, Katusha rockets attacks at the main air defense headquarters of the Northern Group Command located in the Beria barracks. The statement read, the air raid alert was sounded, Safid overnight after the Lebanese movement launched more than 20 rockets towards the northern Israeli city there. Uh, as you might know that, you know, Hezbollah, knowing that a war is about to take place, uh, that Israel is about ready to do a ground war there, they are making sure they can try to limit the ability of Israel to be able to respond to the strikes that they're sending inside of the country there. Um, 
Also, we have two, and I should have brought this out earlier in the broadcast. Russia says 10 settlements were recaptured in the Kursk uh, counteroffensive. I brought that out to you the other day, but uh, we are now having the Guardian reporting on that as well. It says Russia uh, says its forces have recaptured 10 settlements after it launched a counteroffensive in the Kursk region to push the Ukrainian troops who stormed across the border five weeks ago. With fierce fighting continuing, Russian Defense Ministry listed the names of the 10 settlements it said it had taken and a significant blow to Kiev's Ukraine president. Vladimir Zelensky acknowledged a Russian counteroffensive had begun. Of course, he hasn't acknowledged the fact that he got defeated in that there. Uh, so anyway, there's a whole lot going on right now in the world. Russia expels six British diplomats, as I mentioned to you earlier in the broadcast. We'll be continuing to watch uh, very carefully. A lot of things happening in our own nation as well. Very disturbing things uh, going on. Some things I won't be getting into at the moment, but we'll be discussing later uh, in the coming weeks ahead. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Good afternoon.